Uh, it's kind of, and I'm very, very happy about this next comedian. I'm very proud to announce his arrival here on the stage in Mount Sinai, so close to the uh, Comstock community with no drama, right? Who's part of that page on Facebook? Excellent, right? I love it. The no drama part's really the important part. Because we have some whiny bitches in Port Jeff Station, aren't we? It's amazing. But ladies and gentlemen, as I said, I'm very, very happy, very proud to bring up this next comedian. He is just 16 years old. Yes, just 16 years old. Already performed in the city, which is great. Uh, put your hands together for a junior from Comstock High School, Mr. Kyle Kratzky. Thank you. Let's give it up for John. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so I uh, started pursuing a career in comedy about a year ago. And uh, at my first show, uh, I actually met the MC after sh afterwards, uh, Sean Lynch. And he told me how great I did that he wanted to start helping me manage my career. He invited me um, to perform with him Tuesday night at the Underground. Like, oh my God, it's amazing. Yeah. But my mom's listening to this and she's like, wait, Tuesday? That's a school night. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, Mom, I'm not going to eat school anymore. She wants to get me famous and teach her the three things I need to know for life. How to drink the Ega Bombs. Yeah. How to roll a joint. <laughs> and of course, how to pick up chicks. Nice. But you know, ever since I've started, I've been so inspired by all these comics that I've met. Yeah. I've been inspired to quit comedy, go to college, and pursue a different career. <laughs> so let's hear for Comstock. Right. Any Comstock grads here tonight? How many people have kids in Comstock? All right. How many people don't even know what the hell a Comstock is? <laughs> I mean, as most of you already know, uh, technology has been used more at Consulag. It's supposed to help make things easier for kids in school. I think it's made things worse. Because, for example, we now have the Parent Portal. It's a website where parents can see all your grades, homework assignments, uh, behavior, everything. But let me put it to you this way. It's the worst invention since detention. <laughs> yeah, well, you guys wouldn't know about this stuff. When you came home from school, you could just lie about all your work. Uh, Mom, I don't have any homework. I'm going to play. I can't get away with that anymore these days. Like, uh, hey, Mom, go out to play. Not so fast, Mr. You're not going anywhere. You got science homework and I said do on Friday. Or for you guys, if you had a test, and when you failed it, you had to get it to your parents, what did you do? You slide yourself in the bus. <laughs> Last week I got 55 of my Civil War unit tests. By the time I got on the bus, I already got a test message from my mom saying I couldn't go to the movies. <laughs> I haven't seen my friends since my parents started going to this damn here before. <laughs> uh, I gotta say, who's been enjoying the snow so far? Ooh. Yeah. But you know, now, snow days are actually another way that technology has been improved, because like, for you guys, you used to have to watch TV or listen to the radio to find out if school's closed. But now, we got test mes messages, um, emails, uh, phone calls, are all from our very own aspired weatherman, our superintendent, Dr. Ella. <laughs> Don't you love his messages? <laughs> like, good morning everyone, this is Dr. Ella. Uh, I've been out in the row for about an hour now. Uh, <laughs> Not looking too good. <laughs> Snow's coming down hard. I've been slipping all over my car. So, uh, we're gonna be closed today. Uh, no school tomorrow. Wednesday, who knows. So, uh, stay safe and I'll talk to you soon. Yeah. If you think that's good, I've been thinking the other day, what would it be like if he had a different career? Like, what if he was the owner of the Mets? Like, good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Ella. Uh, so I've been watching the team practice for a bit, and uh, they're not looking too good. <laughs> Appreciate it's bad. 
much. Not doing too well as uh, David Wright. He's horrible. <laughs> I don't think it's safe coming out here. So, uh, no game today. Tomorrow's canceled. <laughs> Wednesday, who knows? <laughs> I'm thinking it might be worse though. What if he was president? Yeah. Good morning everyone, President Raleigh here. I've uh, been flying around the country for a while and uh, the economy isn't looking too good. And, uh, not doing very well with healthcare. So uh, my office hours will be the same. Uh, just come in whenever you want to. You don't have to schedule an appointment. Just come on down, we'll discuss whatever you want. Alright, so let me tell you a little bit about myself. I just celebrated my 10 year anniversary as a brain tumor survivor. Woo! You know, when I was diagnosed with my brain tumor, the doctor told us that there's one in a million chance of having a brain tumor. Great. How lucky was I? Why couldn't I just win the lotto? I mean, you may think that it's scary for somebody to have a brain tumor, but you know, there were some good things about it as well. I got to have a wish granted by the Make-A-Wish Foundation, and it was great. They told me I could pick anything I wanted to wish for, like, wow, there's so many great things I could choose. But then, my family started getting involved. I mean, my mom wants an SUV. My dad wants to meet the Mets. And my little sister wants to go to the American Girls store. They drive me crazy. They want me to wish something for them. Like, uh, hey! I'm the one to survive the brain tumor. I'm the one to piss wish. Or right, you know what? Everybody stop. I've decided on my wish. I wish all of you would just shut up. <laughs> so finally, I made my decision, and I decided to go to Disney World. It was great. We met all the characters and on the rides, and the best part, we got right up to the front of the line, and without having to wait, like just right to the front, we could go on as many times as we want. Like that was the best part. Like, it was one of the greatest trips I ever went on. You know, I just went back in last year, but it was horrible. We had to wait in the lines for like hours. I mean, have you been on those lines? It's like a never-ending maze. Up, up the stairs. Up, oh, we're getting to the top over there. Nope, back down the stairs. Come to the door. Oh, they're gonna show a little movie. All right, movie's over. Come to the door. I think this is it. For another maze. Is this how a mouse feels when it's trying to get to the cheese? <laughs> yeah, you know, I think if I ever go back again, I want to have a relapse. <laughs> so I can make a new wish. Yeah, you know, just this past summer I went to Six Flags Great Adventure, but all the good rides had an hour and a half to two hour wait. But while we were waiting online, we saw a whole bunch of people walking right up to the front. Why was that? Well, they had this new thing they were using called the Fast Pass. Is anybody ever heard of trying, using a Fast Pass at a music park? Yeah, it's great. You get to schedule what time you go on the ride without having to wait online. Yeah, sounds awesome. Just like Make-A-Wish. So I asked them where I could get a Fast Pass. At the front desk. What the hell was that? <laughs> so I go up to the front desk and I'm like, Hi, can I have a Fast Pass, please? Oh, certainly. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars? Okay, wait a sec. I paid seventy-five dollars to get into the park, but now if I actually want to go on rides, I gotta pay another fifty dollars? What a scam. I mean, sure, it's better than the Mango Witch Brain Tumor option, but fifty dollars? You know, they have a couple options for the Fast Pass. There's the regular Fast Pass. For $25 more, there's a gold pass, which allows you to just go right up to the front. And then for $50 more, there's the platinum pass, which is where somebody else goes on the rides for you and tells you about them at the end of the day. <laughs> and again, more businesses have started to learn from this. Like, I went to Applebee's one time, but they brought out our food, and I'm like, can we have silverware, please? Oh, wait, you actually want to eat the food? Okay, uh, that'll be another ten dollars. <laughs> Would you like them cleaned? <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, five dollars more. How many people like Obamacare? Uh, 
you know, I'll help you try this the website. My dad was doing some research on it last week. They have a great new option now, the Obama Fast Pass. <laughs> you pay a regular monthly premium. But if you actually want to see the emergency room doctor before you bleed out, another seven hundred dollars a month for a fast pass. <laughs> now, I found out another good thing about having a brain tumor. It's a great excuse for getting out of things you don't want to do. Like, Kyle, get your homework done. Oh no, can't I have a headache? Oh wait, down, can I get anything for you? Let's see if we get a test in school. Oh hey, can I go to the nurse? Yeah, sure, Kyle, go right away. Like, we're perfect. I use that excuse all the time. Except the more I kept on doing it, my parents were like, it seems to be getting worse. I think we need to take you to the doctor. So we go to the doctor for an MRI and a couple of tests. I'm not going to worry. Nothing's wrong with me. But then the, the doctor came to us and he's like, since his headaches are becoming more frequent, we're going to need to operate. Like, operate? There's something wrong with me. I can't have surgery. Wow. I'm going to have to tell my parents the truth now. They're going to be so upset. They'll probably ground me for life. So I have the surgery. <laughs> you know, talking about waiting before, what's worse than waiting at the doctor? Because growing up with a brain tumor, I had to go to a lot of doctors. It's always the same thing. You gotta wait there for hours. Don't they know what an appointment is? Sometimes I go to the doctor because I'm sick. By the time they call me in, I'm not sick anymore. I mean, doctors are supposed to be smart. Can't they schedule appointments better? I'm at home one day and I get a phone call. Hello? This is Dr. Stein's office. You missed your 2 o'clock appointment. I was surprised. Oh, I'm sorry. If you know you're going to miss your appointment, you need to call and let us know. Okay, can I reschedule? 2 p.m. next Thursday. You are 15 minutes early to fill out your paperwork. So then next week I'm there, 15 minutes early, filling out my paperwork. 45 minutes later, I'm still in the waiting room. So I decided to make a phone call. Hello, Dr. Stein's office. This is Kyle Kraske, Mr. Two O'Clock Appointment. <laughs> I gotta say, out of all the doctors that you have to go to, I can't stand a dentist. Yeah. I don't understand. Why would somebody want to be a dentist? Were they tortured as a child? I mean, the worst part of all is when you have cavities and you have to get a filling. Like, all right, lie back. We're gonna numb your mouth a little bit. So I lie back and they put the tube in my mouth. So I'm laying back, and then the doctor pulls the needle out. Like, the thing is huge. I mean, I've had tons of needles throughout my life, like blood tests, shots, IVs. I even give a shot to myself every night. But this needle, it's huge, and I know it's going to hurt. <laughs> but then the doctor starts having a conversation with the nurse about something he saw on TV last night. He's like waving it in front of my face. I think he's going to poke me in the eye. Just do it already. Will you try and torture me further? He could get a job at Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> you know, another thing that's interesting about me, I'm really into live theater. A lot of crazy things happen in live theater. Bad enough when the actors are human, but even worse when they're not. Because one of the shows I did one time was Andy, and we rehearsed for three months, and the dog Sandy was always perfect. The scenes with Andy, Sandy, and the policeman were fine. But then on opening night, stage right. He peed in the middle of the stage. Yeah, I know. The policeman, not Sandy. <laughs> yep, you got stage fright and pee in his pants. Yeah. I also work as an usher down at uh, Theater 3, and every Saturday we have children's theater there. I don't know who's worse during that, the kids or the parents. Because during intermission, I usually have to sell candy. So I have a little boy come up to the car with his mom, so she's like, Go ahead, tell the nice young man what you want. Go ahead, tell him. Oh, that's sweet. For about five seconds. <laughs> then you got 25 other kids screaming and grabbing the candy behind them. You think you any more, Lee. Just tell me what get the MK wants. This nice, nice young man isn't going to be so nice anymore. <laughs> Parents don't want to be too hard on their kids. They think they're going to have a temper tantrum. So they try to reason with them. Don't you think you had enough sugar for today? Maybe you should wait till after the show. You don't want to spoil your dinner. What the hell are these parents thinking? Like, oh, yes, Mo, that's a grand idea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was reading the Wall Street Journal the other day. 
and it said that children with their daily sugar intake level of 18 grams a day had an 8% chance of getting diabetes. Perhaps we can find a more healthy alternative. Do they have any celery sticks or perhaps some kale? Do parents seriously think they're going to reason with a four-year-old? They spend 20 minutes just trying to reason with the kid. And who ends up winning a force? The kid. You know, when we have main stage shows for the adults, that's just as bad. Lady, can you update your Facebook status after you buy your Snickers bar? You got 25 adults screaming behind you. Facebook should I get Snickers or Hershey's? How do people get through life when they're taking 20 minutes to order a candy bar? Guys, I'm Kyle Krasky. Thank you so much. Great job. Big round of applause for Kyle. That was awesome. From a completely clean comedian to one who is not so much, put your hands together for yet again another comedy.